Good morning. It's good, wonderful Wednesday morning, and um, it's good to see you this morning for Waves of Hope Chapel. My name is Mike Hoffman, and uh, glad to be with you this morning and just to want to bring greetings to you all who are watching from all over the place and uh, very thankful for uh, the time together that we can share like this as uh, we have our Canaveral Port Ministry Chapel time together. So very thankful for that. Uh, I've seen on here the, the Johnsons in Thailand and Eki in Germany and uh, many others who are uh, all around the world watching and very thankful for that. But we're especially thankful for you if you're on one of the ships who are there just off the port here or whatever, whatever port you find yourself um, just hanging out on the ship. And, and uh, we're praying for you and praying for um, all of the, the circumstances we find ourselves in. Just thankful that God has us by his hand and his grace and mercy is rich. And he will keep you, he will keep me and our families as uh, we weather this, as we walk through this uh, time together. And we want to bring just words of encouragement to you, uh, wherever you are, that God is faithful and uh, he keeps his promises and he is, he is our strong right hand. He is our tower to run to. Um, he is where we find hope. So my prayer for you is that um, today you will rejoice in the Lord, that you will have joy in Christ, and that you will um, know his presence in a deeper way than um, you've had in other days, that you will know that he is the good shepherd. And he says, follow me. Uh, so just thinking about the idea of having joy in our hearts, even in our most difficult circumstances and um, all the things that we find ourselves in, our families, separations, all those things, um, that uh, Christ, the joy of the Lord, is our strength. And we're going to look at Acts chapter 15 today uh, as we go through the um, acts of the apostles and the work of God and the Holy Spirit at work in the body of Christ, the church as it began. That is what the book of Acts is about. It is a uh, forming, it is the birthing, it is the, um, the power of the resurrection coming into the life of the follower of Jesus. And as the church gathers together, um, it is also sent um, the very word of, of what we call church um, is actually the word ekklesia, and that word is uh, to call out. And so we are um, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the congregation, the church. We are the called out ones. So we've been called out of darkness into his wonderful light. And, um, and then we're also called not only to uh, be called out of darkness, but we're sent with light into the world. And so um, uh, we have the joy of the Lord as we walk today with him. Uh, but here in Acts chapter 15, we, we see that uh, Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch of Syria, and um, there were some some men who came from Jerusalem, uh, and they were actually there uh, stealing the joy of the Lord, wanting to steal the joy of the Lord by imposing uh, new requirements that they just decided to come, and they'd heard about these new Christians who were not Jewish, and they decided to come and look at it and check it out and see that um, they weren't following the Jewish laws. And uh, and the other laws that Jews had added onto those five books of Moses, the, the uh, introductory law of, of God, the, the heartbeat of God, that, uh, those first five books they're called um, in, in the Bible. And so um, here they were uh, coming to this church, this congregation, 
who were joyful in the Lord, and then they, um, they wanted to impose some laws on them, some restrictions on them. So here in Acts chapter 15, we see that uh, it begins in this chapter, it begins with a dispute, an argument, and then it also, at the end of the chapter, we'll see that it ends with a dispute as well. One is a theological dispute, an argument, and one is a relational dispute um, that happens. And uh, so we'll, we'll look at this very quickly. Uh, uh, these men come from Jerusalem in the first couple of uh, verses of chapter 15. And uh, I like what the message says. The, these men come... Uh, it wasn't long, it says in, in the message, it wasn't long before some Jews showed up declaring you can't be saved without religious work. Um, and so they showed up and I think, uh, I call it, they gummed up the works. They wanted to uh, gum up the work of grace uh, in the life of these new Christians and the joy that they had. They wanted to jam up these new believers who have been saved through faith and uh, not from works. And as Paul later writes about this, probably maybe reflecting even on this own, this very uh, circumstance of him being faced with these Jewish men who came to um, uh, impose law, uh, maybe later he writes to the Ephesians in chapter two, <clears throat> verse eight and nine, it's by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, so what a great picture that is. We are saved through faith by grace, by grace through faith, and uh, it's not of works. And so Paul writes that later in Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine, uh, to remind us. So it says that the church sent, uh, after these men stood up and said, you must be circumcised. That was the law they decided to give these, um, these new Christians. You all must be circumcised. Paul and Barnabas stood up, it says, and vehemently argued against it. Uh, they got in their face and they said, no way. It is by grace that uh, we are saved. It is by grace that you as a Jewish Christian are saved. It is by grace that you as, a, as, as Gentiles, these men and women who are here in this church are saved. It's by grace. It's not of these works. And so they argued with them. And then finally they decided, let's get this settled. Let's go to Jerusalem and let's talk to the leaders. And that's what they did. So they go to Jerusalem and, and uh, they have this long discussion. And what I really love about this uh, it says, when they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including some of the, including the apostles and elders. And they reported everything that uh, God had done through them. Um, and, uh, and, and before they even got to Jerusalem, they, they shared on their way in Phoenicia and Samaria, they visited the believers and told them uh, about this. And it says there in uh, verse three, much to everyone's joys that the Gentiles too were being converted. The Gentiles, that is uh, people who were not Jewish, the Gentiles were coming to faith in Christ. And, and in Phoenicia and Samaria, there was a lot of joy about that um, happening. And then they get to Jerusalem and... Um, and then it says the sect of the Pharisees, those who were teachers of the law, stood up and, and insisted uh, they must be circumcised. And then a great argument went on from there. Um, and then finally, Peter stood up and said, let me tell you, let me remind you what God has done through my ministry. He's called me to uh, share the gospel to the Gentiles. And I did that. And he, he reminds them of Cornelius and how the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius' family as they believed Jesus and trusted Jesus. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a prescribed thing that happened. It was Peter 
sharing the good news with Cornelius and his family back in Acts chapter 10. Check it out. And, and there um, they get saved and they believe in Christ, that he died on the cross for their sins. And, and it says the Holy Spirit came and fell on them. And, uh, and so uh, much to Peter's surprise at that point, and yet here they, and Peter re reminds uh, these leaders in the church um, about that. And that in verse nine, I love this, that Peter boldly says this, he made no, God made no distinction between us Jewish people and them non-Jewish people, for he cleansed their hearts through faith. And that's a great picture. And so he, then he says, so why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers? Why are you testing God? And that's the very same word, that word testing God, the same word he used in Acts 5 when he talked to Ananias and Sapphira. You might remember that they held some of their gift money that they had claimed they had given all to share with the, the community of believers. Uh, they claimed that, but they were lying. And, they, and Peter says, why are you testing God? Why are you testing the Holy Spirit? Um, and you're going to pay for that right now. Uh, as, and they drop dead. That same word Peter uses here, he says, uh, so why challenge God by burdening? Um, by burdening their hearts, by burdening these, these new believers. Um, and uh, so he said, he said, uh, God knows people's hearts and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. So Peter said, the ground is level as we come to Christ whether you're a Christian, whether you're religious, whether you've had religious experiences, whether you were born going to the church, like I hear many friends say, I was going to church before my mother gave birth to me. She carried me, even as she was pregnant, into church for worship. And, and, um, and, you know, and so I had this history of being a churched person, going to church or having religious experiences. Peter says, God makes no distinction whether you have been a good person, religious person, or you have been the vilest of sinners. He says he saves us the same way, by grace, through faith. I really like that picture. And, and that's a great picture. So, um, he saves us. We believe that we are all saved, verse 11, the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. That's a great picture. I like the definition that I've shared many times before and I've heard. It's not mine. I, I, I heard this from somebody, but uh, grace is receiving, getting something we do not deserve. Mercy is not getting something we do deserve. When God gives mercy, he's, he's giving us um, the freedom from punishment that fell on Jesus. That's mercy. God shifted. He took my sin my guilt, and he placed it on Jesus at the cross, just like this picture here behind me shows. He took my sin. That's mercy. I did not get what I deserved, which was death physically and death spiritually, being separated from holy God. Instead, he gave me grace, and that grace is is that uh, overwhelming um, gifts that God gives us of salvation, of being cleansed and free from all sin through the cross. Um, 
he gives us that grace to have fellowship through the Holy Spirit. While we live in these mortal bodies, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will send the comforter to you. And he will teach you, he will guide you as we listen in our hearts to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. He is our teacher. He's like our coach. I like that word. So, so Peter says he made no distinction. We are all saved the same way by that undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. And everyone listened, it said, to Barnabas and Paul uh, as, as they told about <clears throat> the signs and wonders <clears throat> that God had done. And then when they'd finished, the leader, the eldest elder of the church, James, stood up and, and he said, let's not create any more trouble for these new believers except to uh, stay away from meats that have been sacrificed to idols and, and blood, serving blood as a food element. And so he said, stay away from those things, abstain from those things. And so they were excited. They wrote a letter. They went back to the church in Antioch and, and the, the church rejoiced. They were, why did they rejoice? Because they, they felt the freedom of, of being followers of Christ. They had no other requirements to fulfill other than following Jesus. And so I like to take this, I, I thought about this, um, Paul, uh, Peter said, why are we yoking? Why are we making a burden um, uh, for these new believers? And, and he said, why are we imposing the law? That would be L-A-W flipped around the law. And I, I, I've got this book. This is, a, this is a huge book. It's old. It was from the early 1900s. And it's a collection of the London Times. But... Um, I've carried this thing for 40 years around to wherever we've lived, and it is heavy. Uh, I, I can't imagine carrying this every day with me uh, and trying to uh, move it from place to place. I can't imagine walking any great distances with this big book, and that's really kind of like what the law is. And Peter said, we as Jewish people could not bear and keep and follow all of this. So why should we help ask these non-Jewish people, these Gentiles, to try to carry this? And that's what the law is. And so thankful, so thankful for grace. Grace through faith. So thankful or grace, as we put our faith in Christ, he gives us that grace. Isn't that a great picture? Well, I like this idea, and, I, and of course, this is um, backwards for you, but grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's a great picture of grace. God's riches his abundant richness at Christ's expense. And that's what grace is for us. And as a young Christian, I learned that faith is forsaking all. I trust him. Forsaking all. I trust him. Isn't that a great thought of how what faith is? Faith is I'm forsaking, I'm giving up on all of Anything that I think is good in me, um, I'm giving up that. Uh, I forsake all of whatever else I thought would make God happy with me. And I trust him. That is Jesus. I trust Jesus to introduce me. When I stop breathing here, Jesus is going to uh, welcome me because I trust him. And I've given up on everything else. And that's what Paul did. And that's how he proclaimed Christ to these Gentile Christians. Now, as we finish up Acts 15, at the very end, I said there was another dispute. And it was 
simply this, that um, um, Paul didn't want, did not want to go as they decided to go back and visit the churches they had already started and had traveled on that first missionary journey that Paul and Barnabas went on. They were going to go back and encourage those Christians on that and take a trip. And Barnabas wanted to bring his cousin Mark with him. But Paul said, no way, because Mark left us on the last trip. Uh, he turned back and uh, there was an argument between Paul and Barnabas, a dispute. And it got so difficult that they could not agree to, to, to come together, and so they parted ways. Um, is that the end of the story? No, it's not. I really think Barnabas was a hero in that. Uh, I can't imagine if Barnabas said, uh, I'm going to go with Paul and cousin, you go home. I don't know what that would have done to the heart of Mark, to Mark's heart, if, if Barnabas had just left him and said, go, go back. Um, instead, Barnabas took Mark with him and went on a, his mission and, and, and probably encouraged and helped Mark grow. So much so that in Corinthians, in chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, we can see that, that uh, Paul and Barnabas are together again, serving together. And in Timothy, Paul writes the letter to Timothy and says, uh, please bring Mark. Uh, he's so helpful to me. And, and so all that time, that, that separation was a time for Barnabas to apply grace to Mark's life and mercy. Um, certainly, it was not a good thing that Mark would have left them in the middle of a trip. That was a, a, not a good time to do that. But, um, but Barnabas gave that time to Mark to encourage him and grow him in Christ. And in the end, it was um, this coming together of all of them in Christ. So what a great picture that is. Uh, so the words today for you and me, the good word, the good news is that there is grace to be had in Christ and his riches, God's riches at Christ's expense. And it's all found through faith, forsaking all, I trust him. I hope you do that today. If you're not a follower of Jesus and you're watching this and, and uh, maybe you're thinking, what, what are they talking about? Simply ask Christ, Lord, show yourself to me and be watching for that, how he shows himself to you. And know that he died for you, that he loves you so much so that he would stretch his hand out, his hands out on a, on a cross, on a wooden beam and die for your sins and for my sins. He took them on himself. Isn't that a great picture? I'm going to show you this picture real quick. My friend actually painted this, this and I want you to see just quickly all the different kinds of people that are around the cross. And that's what it's going to be like in heaven someday. And the scripture verse that my friend Bill Wallace attached to this is John 3.16. And John 3.16, we you might know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I hope that's for you today. And that is good news. Father, we thank you for today and thank you for your word in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.